Okay, before we get to the luminol, let's talk about how we got here. The first thing that happened was we got this new UV light. Um, blue UV light. You can kind of see even under the keyboard how it gets white particles and that. And so we noticed, we thought that um, it would illuminate both blood and other body fluids, urine, whatever. But we quickly noticed uh, it illuminates urine, but we had a uh, you know, blanket that had been full of blood for various reasons. And uh, it surprised us. It didn't uh, illuminate it. So we thought maybe this just wasn't strong enough, whatever. So we went ahead and got this which is a giant UV flashlight that has 132 bulbs. And we thought, okay, that will make the blood light up. And sure enough, it still didn't light up, but it lights up all kinds of other stuff. You know, it's crazy for urine, uh, works great. So then we started reading into it more and found out that it isn't uh, UV that makes blood light up. It's actually luminol that's used. So on that note, that's how we started, you know, reading and researching luminol. And we came up with the experiment we're gonna get into. Uh, we bought this uh, one gram of luminol powder. A couple quick notes, we got it. And I was like, man, this is really a small amount. You know, there's not much in there. Well, it turns out, uh, as you'll see, a little bit of luminol goes a long way. So one gram is, is plenty, uh, you know, for any of your home-based tests. So don't be concerned about the quantity that you get. Um, then the next thing is we thought we'd just mix it with water, but, so the luminol is not soluble in water, um, but it is soluble in organic solvents. So what that means is what we did on our side is basically bought lye, sodium hydroxide, um, and we mix it with some distilled water. It gives off a little bit of heat, but it makes a solution that you can use to dissolve the luminol in. First, let's take a quick look at all the chemicals. All right, so here we got the luminol, which has like barely any in it. Hydrogen peroxide trop topical solution. These look like coconut flakes. Sodium hydroxide blood meal, which we don't know if it's, it's real blood or not. Okay, so at a high level, you come up with two solutions. One is just uh, dilute hydrogen peroxide, and for that, I simply use the 3% hydrogen peroxide, uh, you know, right out of the container. Then the other one is the solution where you create. Um, uh, solvent using lye, the water. So I used about a, a, let's say a cup of distilled water with maybe a half teaspoon or a teaspoonful of uh, the sodium hydroxide, and then just dissolved a tiny, tiny smidgen. I'm sure I used way too much luminol, but like, I don't know what they say, like 0.1 of a gram. So, uh, you know, do that as you see fit. So the reaction is actually between the two solutions we've created. Um, but it kind of gets expedited or increased when you introduce a catalyst. And uh, for the forensics purpose, the catalyst is the iron in your blood or in the hemoglobin, I guess it is. Uh, but to run a real quick test on this, there's also uh, bleach, I guess sodium hypochlorite bleach is a, uh, a very intense, quick catalyst. So that's what I wanted to do here is just pour it into the combined solution and see if we got a reaction out of it. So we've proved out that our uh, solutions do create light in the presence of a catalyst. So now what we're going to do is create our crime and scene. And then we're going to do some splatter. Fake blood. I'm going to add a little. Yeah, let's see how our fake blood is coming. It looks really yummy. Looks pretty good. We use dried blood meal fertilizer as our fake blood. Uh, but I think you can get by from anything from, uh, what, like fresh horseradish, which we'll test out. Um, you can get blood from a uh, butcher. So the idea here was to create a crime scene, test it once with the, you know, the blood present, and then try to clean it up and see how it, you know, how it worked, clean it up, if the oxygenated cleaners worked better. It's impossible to film, at least with my camera, but you can get some decent uh, long exposure pictures. And then the next thing we immediately noticed is just how well it worked. You know, we were kind of still halfway anticipating that we're not going to be able to see it or that. And, uh, you know, once you turn the lights off, get situated, spray the luminol, it is really, really bright. So some observations um, real quick in retrospect, I think we probably start out with, you know, just a, a drop of blood. This stuff is so insanely sensitive that, you know, our, our kind of crime scene just created a huge luminol mess <laughs> that we were trying to clean up afterward. 
One of the first experiments was to grab the bloody t-shirt and then drop it, push on the door, and then open the doorknob. And you can see the result of that in this picture here. I mean, it, granted, I made no attempt, uh, you know, to clean up or anything, but you can see the, the marks on the door, uh, you know, on the door handle. And then you can even see the reflection on the other side is what that is. Then the next thing we tried to do was get a, uh, you know, a shoe, step on a shirt with the shoe, see how it worked, and then wash the shoe off and see if we could still detect the presence of blood. Of course, that didn't disappoint. We went walking around outside afterward, but we could still detect a huge amount of blood on the shoe when we came back. Then we even did try rinsing it off in the sink to see if there was still some, and there was some still, uh, like, residual blood detected, fake blood with our uh, luminol solution. You can see the front half of the shoe looks pretty good, but it's all the cracks and crevices that, uh, you know, is detecting blood on the, the shoe even after being washed. We noticed too that just trying to continually clean up uh, all these messes that we were making, my hands actually started glowing about halfway through the process. We also tried smashing a turnip or a horseradish, uh, or fresh horseradish as well, and got a reaction that looks very similar to blood. As you can see in the picture, the shirt is covered in blood. And that's just from a regular wash. So now we're going to try to take a section and wash it with the OxyClean. You can see I rinsed the shirt out uh, a couple times in that, and then I sprayed a bunch of that oxygenated cleaner on the right-hand side of the shirt. And I was actually stunned at, uh, you know, how well that did in uh, kind of avoiding or suppressing uh, the luminol reaction. Okay, so you can see I cleaned the front half of the bathtub, but there was still a little bit of the luminol solution on there, so I want to show you what happens when the bleach hits it. And just how sensitive that stuff is. So I hope you could see the little illuminated uh, bleach droplets there. To wrap up the whole experiment, um, it, you know, it was a lot of fun. I would say, uh, you know, always be careful with whatever you're doing. Make sure you do plenty of reading and research. Use proper glassware and safety equipment, eye protection, all that good stuff. Um, and I don't know, I don't have any history here, so I don't know if the, you know, blood meal that we used as the catalyst is, you know, you know. Blah, blah, blah. Go try it for yourself. Have fun. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.